All right, so uh, what we're into this morning uh, is the motion equations. Now, in, what this is really trying to do is uh, it is supposed to be a review of the grade 11 motion equations that you hopefully did. Uh, again, 2020, I don't know what happened. Uh, and then later today, what we are going to do is, again, do the grade 12 thing where we take it to two dimensions, these motion equations, because in grade 11, you've only done them in one dimension. All right, so hopefully what you've done, because this is the easiest... Uh, way to go about it is that you've printed off the motion equation sheet that I posted on Google Classroom. All right, and uh, typically what happens is students struggle with figuring out which equation they're going to use. And so that's what I'm gonna to try to help you out with is how do we uh, get our variables and then make those variables decide which equation we have to use. All right, so again, I'll be referring to this uh, motion equation formula sheet. I highly suggest printing it off uh, for right now, uh, and the 10 o'clock class and the 11 o'clock class. And of course for our test, which is on Tuesday, I thought it was on Monday, but I forgot we got a long weekend coming family day. So, all right, without further ado, here we go. Uh, so, uh, we'll go through the, uh, different things here. So example one, we have an Olympic diver falls from rest from a 10 meter high platform. All right. So I've read the question. That's always my thing is I got to take this English and I got to convert it to math and then do the math. Uh, that's our whole physics aspect here. All right, so the A asks, um, at what velocity uh, does she strike the water? So if we want to know what velocity she struck the water, that would be what's called our VF variable, our final velocity. All right, now, this is an Olympic diver who just falls from rest. So if you're initially at rest, that means your initial velocity is zero. And again, that's the only time a vector uh, has no direction is when the magnitude is zero, because you can't go from one direction or the other. Um, and they fall from a 10 meter high platform. So that is telling us our delta D, our displacement is, is that from where they started to where they finished, they were 10 meters, but down, a little arrow down there. All right, uh, now here's the other thing. There's sometimes hidden uh, variables within our questions, much like the from rest. It's a nice way of saying that your initial velocity is zero, but if you're just falling and you're on earth, we also know the acceleration. And the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity on earth. Now on earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. And again, it's a vector and hopefully again, you know that gravity works down. All right, so there again is another piece of hidden information within the question. Now we get to, we've got our information down. What we're gonna look at now is which equation do I use from my formula sheet, all right? So here's how I do it. The first thing is we have to have the equation with VF in it because VF is what we're trying to find out. So I look for an equation first off that has VF in it and then we know everything else. And so if I look at my first equation, uh, it has VF, uh, but we need the delta T. We do not have the delta T, so I can't use the first equation on my sheet. I look at my second equation, uh, it doesn't even have a VF. No, it doesn't even have a VF, so I can't even use that equation. Uh, then, do I go, then I go to my third equation here, and let's see here. Uh, I have VF in it, good. Uh, but again, this equation has delta T in it, can't use it. Then I go to my fourth equation, uh, it has VF in it, good. Uh, we need VI, got it. Uh, we need A, we need delta D. Good, we have all the information. So I'm going to use my fourth equation, which is VF squared is equal to VI squared plus two A delta D. All right, so now I've got the equation. Now it's substituting in. But again, I have to account for directions. So what I will typically do 99% of the time is when we're dealing with up and down is up is positive, down is negative. All right, so now when I substitute into my, substitute in my values, all right, I have VF squared. 
Uh, VI is zero, so well, I have zero squared. Okay, plus two times my acceleration. Now, my acceleration here is 9.8, but it's meters per second squared down, so I put in a negative 9.8. All right, uh, the displacement is also down, so it's going to be a negative 10. All right, so uh, well, that's zero there. That's gone, that's zero squared. That's just not going to count for anything. Uh, so then I have VF squared, and then I multiply uh, my three numbers. So a positive times a negative gives me a negative, a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So I multiply my three numbers, and I uh, get uh, 196. All right, and then of course, squaring, rooting each side, I get my VF to equal the square root of 196, which, let me see here with my trusty calculator. Oh, nice number, 14. Now, this formula, I started off with this one because it's a little different in that you notice that there's no vector symbols in here because it is VF squared and VI squared. Well, you cannot square a vector. You can't multiply vectors. You can add them and subtract them, but you cannot multiply and divide vectors by each other. All right, and so I have to do a little analysis with this formula. And when you have VF, uh, I have to figure out the direction of this. Now, the key here is, I kind of skipped a little bit of a step, is that when I take the square root of a number, and I'm sure if you've dealt with this in math or not, but the reality is when you take the square root of a number, it's actually plus and minus. Because the square root of a number is what number times itself will give you the number inside the square root sign. Well, negative 14 times negative 14 would also work. And so when I'm reading this question, I have to figure out whether it's going to be the positive 14 or the negative 14. And of course, in this situation, because the diver is going downwards, it's actually the negative 14. So you have to do that physics analysis uh, when you're using this uh, equation. And so after all of that, the answer is 14 meters per second. And the direction, again, it would be the minus 14, which means that the final velocity would, of course, be downwards. All right. Now, we got part B. Part B is asking, uh, how long does the dive take? So I'm looking for a delta T. How long does this dive take? All right, so again, I'm back. It's a different question, even though it's the same scenario. Back to my motion equations to figure out what formula I should use. And so uh, first off, I have to use the equation with delta T in it, because that's what we're looking for. All right, so I look at my first equation. And I do have a delta T in it, uh, but I need the VF. I got it now. Uh, the VI, I have it, and I need the acceleration. Perfect, I can use the first equation. All right, so I'm going to substitute in. So I'm gonna write down my first equation first, I guess. So I have A is equal to VF uh, minus VI all over delta T. All right, so again, substituting in, but taking into account that down is negative, up is positive. All right, so my acceleration here is a, a so it's going to be a negative 9.8 is equal to uh, my VF, which I just found, which would be 14, but it's down, so a minus 14, then a minus sign, because that's in the equation, my VI, that's uh, zero, and divide by delta t. All right, now I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Negative 9.8. Uh, I'm just going to figure at the top there, minus 14 minus 0. Well, if you lose 14, then you don't lose anything else. You're still at minus 14. So I just simplified that. Now, here's a trick I like to use in math and physics, I guess, because part of me is math, is uh, I have a number equaling a fraction. Well, I always like to make a fraction equaling a fraction. Uh, and you can do that with any number. You can turn any number into a fraction by just dividing by one, because any number divided by one, or anything divided by one, is just itself. So I just changed the way this looks, not anything about it. And so uh, now I can cross multiply, and that gets rid of my fraction. So I have a negative 9.8 times delta t. 
is equal to, well, 1 times negative 14. There we go. So now the fractions are gone. And then I'm going to divide by my numerical coefficient here, which is negative 9.8. And let's see here, delta t is going to be negative 14 divided by negative 9.8, uh, which is, let me see here, get my cal trusty calculator out. And I get 1.43. And there we go. Now, one thing to watch out for when you're doing these questions, if you ever get a negative time, that's one variable, you know you got the wrong answer. You cannot have negative time. You cannot go back in time. You can waste time, but you cannot go back in time. So that's one thing to watch out for. You should never get negative time. All right, so there's example number one. Let's uh, go with number two here. Flying everywhere. All right, so example number two uh, the Beatermobile, my old car. Broke down on me all the time. All right, thank God I got rid of it. All right, so the Beatermobile enters a drag race. In the race that lasts four and a half seconds, the Beatermobile has an acceleration of 3.7 meters per second squared forward. A. So we got a multi-part here again. How far did the Beatermobile travel during the race? All right, so if I wanna know how far, I'm looking for its displacement. All right, so uh, now I'm gonna reread the question, see what information I actually do have. The Beatermobile enters a drag race. So here again is where there's a secret variable. If you've ever seen a drag race before, which I haven't seen too many of them, but here's what I do know is they start from a, they start from rest or they start not moving. And so that means our VI is zero. All right, uh, in a race that lasted four and a half seconds. So I'm just going through this question sentence by sentence, word by word, but that tells me my delta T is 4.5. All right, and uh, the acceleration, is uh, 3.7 meters per second squared uh, forward. So we'll put an F there. There we go. And that's it. All right. So we want our delta, delta D. All right. So there's our information. So again, what I'm going to do is figure out uh, which equation I need to use. So uh, let's see here. I, I need the equation with delta D in it. All right. And then I got to know everything else in that equation. So I look at my first equation on the top of the sheet. It doesn't even have delta D. I'm not using it. Uh, the second one has a delta D. Let me see. I need a VI. I got that. I need a delta T. I got that. I got acceleration. I need delta T. Perfect. Second equation, which is delta D is equal to VI times delta T. Uh, what else here? Plus one half A delta t squared there we go and there's our our formula all right so now it's time to substitute in all right so again uh what direction i have a forward here so typically 99 percent of the time i'm going to use forward as positive backwards as negative i think for obvious reasons all right uh, so let's see here i'm going to sub in why don't i use a different color here give that a the rest all right, so let's see here. So I have delta D. I don't know delta D. That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Uh, VI is zero, so we'll put a zero there. Uh, my time is four and a half, so we got a 4.5 here. Plus uh, one half. Uh, anytime I have a fraction, I always like to just convert it to a decimal. So one divided by two, that's all a fraction is, is a divided by a question that's not done yet, so that's a half. Uh, my A is 3.7, it's forward, so it's going to be positive. So I get 3.7 there. And T squared, I have 4.5 squared. All right, so we keep going here. So delta D, let's see. Uh, 0 times 4.5 is 0. Plus, I got this stuff. I'm just going to follow Bedmus here and 
figure out what 4.5 squared is first. I think that's 16 something. Let's see here. Uh, take 4.5, square it. No, oh, not even close. 20.25. All right. All right. And then, uh, well, this is gone. This zero doesn't mean anything. And so I have my delta T. Let's see. I multiply my three numbers and I get, let's see, multiply them up. 37.46 meters. Now, it's a vector. It's a positive number, which means the direction is forward. And I hope in a drag race it would go forward. Otherwise, I could get messy. All right, now that's A. B. B, we are looking for what was the Beaterobile's final velocity? So essentially, what velocity did it have when it crossed the finish line? So again, I go to my formula sheet. Now, now that we're finding stuff out too, you'll find that more than one equation will work. Uh, I just like to keep it simple for the way I do it. It always works, so that's why I do my, my method. So again, I'm going to look for VF. And uh, in the first equation, I, I found it. Uh, do we have A? Yes, we do. Do we have VI? Yes, we do. Do we have delta T? Yes, we do. All right. So I'm going to use that first equation. All right, so I have uh, A is equal to VF minus VI all over delta T. All right, and uh, yeah, let's change up the color again here. So uh, let's see here, A I know is 3.7. VF, uh, that's what we want. Minus uh, VI, what was that? Oh yeah, zero, nothing to that. And then I got a 4.5 as my time. All right, so uh, so there it is substituted in. Um, now this minus zero, eh, I can just get rid of that. Because minus zero doesn't do anything to it. There we go. All right, and again, I have a number equaling a fraction here. So the easiest way to get rid of a fraction is to have a fraction equaling a fraction, because again, I'm going to do that cross multiplying, where I have one times VF is VF. And that is equal to 3.7 times 4.5. I multiply those two numbers, and let's see what I get here, uh, 14, 15 something, that close I get, 16. 0.65, and again, the units are going to be meters per second because my time's in seconds and my acceleration is in meters per second squared. And because it's positive, that means it was going forward. Again, hopefully, because it's a drag race. All right, that is uh, a B. Now we go to C, multi parts here. What are we looking for C? Uh, what is the beta reveal's average velocity? So V, we're looking for just V, all right, your average velocity. That's also the same. It can be written as V average or V av. Same thing, but that's what we're looking for here. And there's only a couple of formulas for that. And uh, they're down at the very, very bottom, not even on the chart on that motion equation sheet. And what we get is that your average, and this is just like finding the average of two tests, uh, you take one test plus the second test, or in this case, our first velocity and our second velocity, and you divide by two. And so our average velocity, let's see here, VF, again, forward I have is positive, so I'm going to have a 16.65 plus zero, divide by two, and essentially what we're going to have here is 16.65 divided by two, so it's gotta be eight. Uh, let's see here, round to two decimal places, we get 8.33 meters per second. And again, because it's a positive number, and I've said that for, for me, forward was positive, and so that the average velocity is forward. There we go. All right, lots going on there. Now we get to the beauty of a question. The big one at the end here, on the back page, example number three. Let's get rid of this. Oh, run out of sauce. 
All right, so example number three. Let's see here, how am I doing for time? All right. So we have an arrow is shot upwards with an initial velocity of 52 meters per second up. All right. Uh, well, that's it. Okay. Uh, then A, what is the maximum height that the arrow will reach? Okay. So there's a lot of hidden kind of variables in this type of question. All right. So. All I know so far is that the initial velocity of the arrow, the VI, is 52 meters per second up. And what we want to know is, what is the maximum height of the arrow? Okay. Now, a couple of things with our hidden, hidden variables is that the arrow is going straight up until it doesn't. Because the phrase, what goes up must come down, is pretty much true. <laughs> we will learn later on in this course that it's not always true. Uh, but it, for, for the most part here, it is true. And so this arrow is going up. And so constantly, it's going up and it's being slowed down by gravity, which has an acceleration again of 9.8 meters per second squared. And of course, the direction is down. All right. Now, the other thing is, if we're finding the max velocity or maximum uh, height, that's a distance. So we're looking for the displacement. Now, here's, a, again, a hidden variable. Your arrow is going up and up and up and up and up, and then it reaches its maximum height. And then it heads downwards. Now, the entire time that it's on its way up, it has a positive velocity. On its way down, it has a negative velocity because it's heading downwards. But at the very, very top, we have what's in the middle. Not positive, not negative. We have a zero velocity. So for a very split minute seconds of time, your arrow is suspended in midair. It's kind of like uh, the cartoons where they're suspended in midair. Same idea, that's the maximum height. And that occurs when your object just literally stops. All right, so now I have my variables. And just as I did before, I'm going to look for the equation I need. So let's see here. I get my formula sheet once again. I need a delta D, and then i got to know everything else. So I look at my first equation. doesn't have delta D. Uh, the second one does, but I need a VI, which I got, and I need a delta T. I don't have delta T. Uh, I look at the third equation once again. There is a delta D there, but again, I do not have the delta T that's in the equation. Uh, I look at my fourth equation. Okay, I have a delta D in it. I need VF, I got it, VI, I got it, and I need A, perfect. All right, so I'm going to use my fourth equation, all right, which is uh, VF squared equals VI squared uh, plus two times A times delta D. All right, so again, accounting for my signs, again, I always say that positive is up, negative is down, so now I'm going to plug in my numbers. So uh, VF uh, is zero, zero squared. VI, we have a 52 up, so it's going to be a 52 squared. Plus two times our acceleration. It's a 9.8, but down, so negative 9.8. And my delta D, uh, that's what we're trying to find out. All right, uh, let's see here. Simplifying, zero squared is zero. 52 squared, I'm going to need a little calculator action for that. Uh, I get 2,704. All right, and uh, I can put these two numbers together. Two times a negative 9.8 is uh, negative 19.6 delta D. All right, uh, let's see here. So now all I'm going to do is move this negative 19.6 delta D over to the other side. And so it would become a positive 19.6 delta D. And what'd be left over there, that 2704. All right, and my I guess, second last step, I'm gonna divide both sides by 19.6. All right, so my delta D, let's see here, I take 2704, I divide it by 19.6, I get, 
137.96 meters. And it's positive, so that means the arrow went up, which obviously we knew, but again, the signs uh, helped us out with that. All right, so that's A. Now B. We are looking for how long, well, this is a totally different separate scenario here because we talked about the maximum height, but it says, how long uh, does it take the arrow to be 100 in 25 uh, meters above the ground. So now we're in a totally different situation here where we're looking for oh, 125, not 150. When is our displacement 125 meters up? So I'm gonna rewrite some of these variables. Uh, the acceleration is still gonna be the same. Uh, we are looking for how long, so that's talking about a delta T, and uh, what else? Oh, VI is still the same, that doesn't change. So we got 52 meters per second up, all right. So there we go, so there's our new data for B. I don't think anything changed other than we don't know what velocity is at that height. All right, and there we go. So again, I've got my variables. I'm looking for what equation I'm gonna use, so I better get my equation sheet here. There we go. Uh, I'm looking for delta T, right? Uh, okay, first equation has delta T, but we're missing the VF. Uh, second equation has the delta T. I need a delta D, I got that. I need a VI, I got that. And I need an A, and I got that. All right, so I'm going to use the second equation, which is delta D is equal to VI times delta T uh, plus one half A times delta T squared. All right, so there it is. And as I've done before, I'm going to do my substitution, again, counting for the signs. Uh, delta D, 125 up, so it's going to be a 125. VI is 52 up, so it's going to be a 52 times the delta T. All right. Uh, let me see here, plus a half. Again, I'm going to make half a decimal. Uh, we got 9.8 as our acceleration, but it's down, so there's a negative 9.8. And we have a delta T squared. All right, now I'm gonna simplify in here a little bit. Uh, so, now here's something too, is that I'm solving for delta T in this situation. I have a delta T squared and I have a delta T in the equation. That means in the end here, what I have is, because I have both the, the variable squared and the variable, I'm gonna to have to use a quadratic formula. And so because of that, I am going to move this 125 over. All right, and so uh, I'm going to, first off, uh, simplify this part. So I'm gonna move that 25 over, 125 over. So I got a 52 delta T, uh, this part here, a half of negative 9.8 is minus 4.9 delta T squared. And I'm going to move that 125 over so it's a minus 125. Now, again, the reason I move that 125 over is because, as I said, I am going to use the quadratic formula. And so to use that, you have to have a zero on one side of your equation. Now, I haven't quite got this written in the right order for my quadratic formula, so I'm just going to do that next where you always have your delta t squared uh, term first, or your squared term first, followed by your normal term, which would be the 52 delta t. And then I've got my number at the end, which is the minus 125. All right, so like I said, I'm going to use a quadratic formula, where again, there's my a value, the negative 4.9, my b value is the positive 52, and my c is the negative 125. All right, so here we go. So substituting in, hopefully I got room here, so I might have to skip a few steps, but here we go. Delta T, negative B, well, B is 52, so I'm gonna have a minus 52, plus or minus, whoa, do a big square right there, uh, B squared, which is gonna be 52 squared, minus 4AC, uh, A is negative 4.9, 
sorry if this is a little jumble or a little hard to read. Our C is neg one, negative 125. Put that in there. There we go. And divided by 2A, which is 2 times negative 4.9. All right. Boy, I hope I have enough room. So here we go. Uh, delta T, negative 52, plus or minus. All right. So uh, 52 squared. That's a big number. We just had that one, I think. Uh, 52, 2704. Okay. Now here's where I see most students, because I've taught math a million times, mess up the quadratic formula getting the sign right here underneath the brackets. So I just worry about the sign first. Uh, a negative times a negative here is going to give me a positive. Uh, positive times a negative is going to give me a negative. Now I multiply those three numbers, and under there I should get a uh, 2,450. Nice new uh, round number there. All right, uh, let's see here. 2 times negative 4.9 is negative 9.8. All right, still uh, go ahead here. So I got delta T equals negative 52 plus or minus. Let's see, I got the negative 9.8 in the bottom. Uh, so I subtract 2,704 minus 2450 and then square root it. What do I get there? I get uh, 15.94. Now, getting my two final answers, because that's what happens with a quadratic formula. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do here is divide by the negative 9.8. But I do negative 52 plus 15.94 and then divide by the negative 9.8. And uh, I'm going to get, uh, let's see here, I believe I get 3.68. And I also get negative 52 minus 15.94 and then divide by negative 9.8. And I end up with uh, 6.93. So I've got two answers. Which one is it? Because the question, I know we've done a lot of stuff here, but what the question is asking is, how long does it take the arrow to be 125 meters above the ground? Well, we have two times. They're both positive. So they're both, uh, both real. And here's what's happening here. This 3.68 is on the way up. And the 6.93 is the arrow on the way down. So how long does it take? Well, it would take 3.68 seconds to get to 125 meters because that is the first time uh, that it would, and it asks how long it would take. A question I could ask you is, uh, at what time does it get to 125 meters? And then both times are relevant because it actually hits that uh, height twice. All right, so that again is a review of our uh, motion equations. All right, again, those are from grade 11, going through some secret values like at rest or the acceleration due to gravity.